boop, boop, boop. All right. Hello, welcome here to the Tuesday Live. We are talking about heart health all month long, and we've been diving into the different ways that nutrition and lifestyle ideas can be put in place in order to support you with heart health. So my name is Lucas Simmons. I am your holistic nutrition practitioner, and my gig is in helping people to feel real good. A lot of my work is based on trying to figure out where people are at and then to... Uh, to put those roadmap pieces in place, to put markers on a roadmap to help you find your way so that you can feel better, so that you can feel real good, actually. Not just better, but real good. And, I mean, that's a little bit of a saying that I use all the time, but it's because that's just kind of how you're going to sum it up. I can use a superfluous and big words and try to be so... I can't even, like have elocution that would make your toes curl like no I don't care about that how do you want to feel do you want to feel good oh okay well then I'll help you with that and that is my work and the reason I do what I do is to help empower people because at the root of all chronic disease chronic pain chronic issues chronic health conditions is inflammation and every month we focus on a different way that inflammation can show up in the body. And it happens to be that the month of June is a month I decided to talk about heart health and some of those nutritional things you can put in place. So we do this every Tuesday, 1.15. The month of July, I'm actually taking the month off from doing Tuesday Lives because I'm actually putting a book together uh, with a colleague of mine and we are going deep into the production part. Um, and um, recipes and photography and all of that other good stuff. So that is going to be on hold for the month of July. So we've got this Tuesday and then one more Tuesday where we'll be doing a Tuesday Live next Tuesday. Next week it is a live Q&A. So if after today's video you still have some questions about how nutrition can be of benefit to somebody who's struggling with heart health, then just send me a message. Send me a quick question through the private message or direct message or whatever, whether it's on Facebook, Instagram, on YouTube, whatever, in the comments below. Hit me up. I'd love to be your ally and help you figure out some of these pieces. Okay. This week we're talking about the curious connection between the gut and the heart. Ba, ba, ba. I need some theme music. Da, like, I feel like there should be some theme music. I totally come from a background of radio. Can you tell? Anyway. Now, before we get into any kind of information or ideas to start adding into your regimen, if you have heart, uh, heart disease or cardiovascular issues, first and foremost, don't think that nutrition alone is going to fix it. It is really imperative that you actually get this checked out with your medical team. Anything to do with your cardiovascular system and your heart is nothing to mess around with. Always check in with your medical team first and foremost. And when you're ready to start implementing some of the food ideas that you can, you know, you have control over what you're putting in your mouth three to five times a day. So do you want to know what kind of foods can help? Well, then at that point, I'll help you. Okay. So we're going to be talking about cardiovascular disease. First of all, do you know that it's the leading cause of death in North America? Surprise, surprise, it's not a little baby virus. Yeah, no. <laughs> Cardiovascular disease is the highest rate of death from chronic disease in North America. This is huge. So what does heart disease look like? Well, of course, there's heart attacks. Strokes are actually uh, showing up in the brain, but it is a circulatory issue that's showing up. That's why they call it the Heart and Stroke Foundation, because... It's just showing up in two different organs. Uh, you can also count cholesterol numbers that may appear to be out of balance or too high. It can also be high blood pressure, is certainly a cardiovascular thing. And the concept of blood clotting, are you properly clotting? Are you over clotting? Are you under clotting? Those types of things. These are all some of the ways that a cardiovascular disease shows up. Another one too are plaques or atherosclerosis. Okay. Do you know what all of these conditions have in common? They are showing up. Do you know why? They're showing up in your cardiovascular system because of inflammation. So they are messages. It's your body sending messages through your heart system that something is up, that there is chronic inflammation happening. So it's not just that high blood pressure magically shows up and then we will squash it with whatever. You need to understand that you have to figure out why you've got high blood pressure. 
The messengers are sending a message. The symptoms are really just messengers. So don't shoot the messenger. The messenger is trying to tell you something. And understand why the message is sent in the first place. And I'll tell you how you do that. You work at reducing inflammation. That is always going to be the first plan of business when we're talking about heart health. Everything to do with cardiovascular troubles is rooted in chronic low-grade inflammation. It's different for each person. How it shows up is very different. The mechanisms are similar, but a little bit different, depending if it's a high cholesterol number that's showing up, depending if it's high blood pressure that's showing up, depending if it's a buildup of plaque that's actually more a blood sugar imbalance than anything else. But all of these things are all well attended by consuming an anti-inflammatory diet. Now I start with this because, do you know where ground zero for inflammation is? If you don't yet know, I talk about it all the time. The gut. The gut is ground zero for inflammation. Yeah. I have a full video on my blog. It's a fairly recent post. You can head back to my website, find it through the blog there. But there is a really deep connection. Ground zero for inflammation is the gut. So if you understand that heart disease is the way that inflammation shows up in your heart system, a cardiovascular system, then anything you can do to address that ground zero of inflammation is going to reduce inflammation. Now that's a super general overview of things, but let's get into a little bit more of the specifics. So your microbiome. So if I talk about the gut, you have three layers at your intestinal lining. My daughter did my nails the other day. Did you like it? <laughs> so the first layer is that intestinal lining, the skin. The secondary layer, something called your mucosal barrier. And the mucosal barrier is a snot layer. You have snot in the gut. Whoop, whoop. Feel the inside of your cheek with your tongue. Yeah. So that feels kind of slimy, right? That is very similar to what you've got going on at the gut lining. So that first layer is your skin layer. That secondary layer is that mucosal barrier. Slimy, wet, squoogy. I think that's a word. Uh, and then you have a third layer on top of that, and that is called your microbiome. Now, the microbiome is a pretty convoluted, very complex set of things that happen in the microbiome, and the impact it has overall on your health cannot be minimized. It's such a radical new piece to the scientific um, way of looking at things, this microbiome piece. And it's what's so exciting. So I'm doing this from my home in the northwest of Calgary right now. And just down the road at the University of Calgary, we have the microbiome lab. So they're doing so many studies right now to really clearly define what that link is between the microbiome and heart health and other systems and organs of the body. So I love it. It is the hot topic of, of this current day and age, 2020, and it will be, I think, for another 150 years. I, don't, I think we've only scratched the surface of it. But the microbiome has a really important part to play when it comes to heart health. I have, um, so where, where you have an imbalance in your microbiome, that is a collection of bacteria, fungi, yeast, and a bunch of other stuff that's just living. It's a living layer of other cells that are not yours. They are bacterial in nature, virus, um, there are some yeasts in there as well, and they make up what's called your microbiome. And you inherit this from your mom when you come through the birth canal. You also, part of it comes from whatever food you're eating, and it's also influenced by the people with whom you're swapping spit. Yes, it's true. You tend to resemble those with whom you share a house with. Because usually you're sharing other things. Okay, not... Uh, uh, okay, just between the adults. Oh, God. This can so devolve so quickly. I need to be careful how I talk. But the microbiome, when there is an imbalance at the microbiome level, that is really contributing in a really big way to more inflammation. So anything we can do at the gut level for your microbiome is going to help reduce that inflammation. And the the happy microbiome, when you've got those bugs that are in the right balance at the gut lining... When you eat something like whole grains, butter and ghee especially, butter and ghee, they help feed the happy bugs of your gut. And when they get that butter and ghee, they change those into something called short chain fatty acids. 
Short chain fatty acids you need to help reduce inflammation everywhere. It's one of the top ways to reduce inflammation. Short chain fatty acids are only made by certain strains of bacteria and only if they're getting those foods they can change into short chain fatty acids and butter and ghee are one of those foods. So what? Butter and ghee? Yeah, they're gonna win the day again. Oh, that's not a surprise, Luca. Also, anything you can do to support a happy microbiome is going to take you that step further, right? What are the general things for microbiome? I have 82,000 tools in my toolkit, but first and foremost, eat a variety of foods. Switch it up. Change things up every season. You can go that route. And also just having a variety is what's going to help enhance as well. And also look into fermented foods if you can tolerate. That is one of those ways to really make sure your microbiome is super happy. And having all kinds of stuff. Tallow does do some of it, but butter and ghee are even better than tallow. So Eli, having butter and ghee in addition to tallow, yeah, I would say yes. And tallow is great for other nutrients that are a bit harder to find too. Uh, there's another piece to this too for your microbiome. You need actual contact with sunlight outside. So there's something, uh, they're now tracing the link of the sun and the impact on the skin and how it regulates your circadian rhythm and then that in turn impacts your microbiome. A lot of people with their microbiome out of balance are not getting outside. Getting outside actually helps to balance the microbiome. You need to be outside. Get outside and move. That's a really important part to get to the microbiome. And when you start looking after the microbiome in those ways, now the benefits are going to come two and three and fourfold out to your heart center and all of the organs and the parts involved in your cardiovascular system. I'm running down on time. Okay, leaky gut is part two. So leaky gut, when you've got leaky gut, that really just means permeability at the intestinal lining. So you've got gaps between the cells at that first layer, the skin layer of your intestinal lining. When you have gaps there, it's called leaky gut. This leaky gut now allows some stuff to come through that shouldn't be coming through necessarily. And these can contribute to more pro-inflammatory things to happen. They can stoke the fires of inflammation. They can start inflammation, actually. They can also contribute to the workload of your liver. It's your liver, actually, that has to handle anything coming through if there's a leaky gut. And your liver already has 400 jobs to do. And if she's working so hard to try to sift through everything that's coming through your leaky gut, now she's going to put on hold some of the other tasks that she has. And some of those tasks can be really important when it comes to uh, deactivating inflammation in the body and moving the garbage that's made in inflammation, moving that out. It's the garbage that's made during inflammation that actually can be a big part of the problem. So anything you can do to really look after the gut lining is going to in turn reduce how many things are coming into your system that can trigger inflammation in your cardiovascular system and also works to help protect and prolong the work and job of the liver so that she can now really tend to taking inflammation out of the equation and moving it out of the body. So those are really important things, especially when it comes, there are some particular medicines that actually can exacerbate this. So check with your pharmacist or your medical team to see the medication you're on, what kind of impact does it have at the, at the gut level, and is there an alternative that might not be as impactful at that gut level that might be able to help? Or, hey, here's an idea. Why don't you get at the root of why that problem's happening too? Oh, guess what? It's going to be at the gut level first and foremost. Oh, it's all the same thing, guys. Yes, it's always the same thing, and it's always going to be the same story. So here are the stats. I pulled a couple of things. This is interesting. So Chris Kresser, who I really love and appreciate so much, he has this uh, quote on his site. Studies link changes in gut microbiome with intestinal permeability, leaky gut, inflammation, insulin, leptin resistance, which is a type of hormone, and metabolic problems. These are all major risk factors for coronary heart disease. So if you want to flip that on its head, why don't you look after the gut so that you can reduce those numbers so now they're not going to have an impact on your cardiovascular health. Oh. They're totally connected. How are you going to look after the gut? Well, I have a two-hour class that's already ready for you to go. I'm going to post about it this afternoon. Take a peek for that. In the meantime, I'm going to launch another gut class sometime in the fall. Hopefully you can join me then. In the meantime, go eat some butter and ferments if you can tolerate. That's it. That's all. If you have any more questions, pop them in the comments below. 
Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week for the half hour long live Q&A. Ciao, salut, à bientôt.